So there seems to be a lot of talk around predictions when it comes to AI. Um, just recently, Tesla was demonstrating in their self-driving how they were able to predict that a truck was going to take the right turn lane. And this is a really big uh, proof that they're innovating in artificial intelligence because they are able to <clears throat> make these amazing predictions. And every single artificial intelligence company has the same, and research team, whatever, sort of has the same stance, where the only way to get artificial intelligence to work is that you have to be able to build a prediction machine, and that this is the crux to making AI work. But I think this is wrong. Firstly, because prediction science is kind of bunk to begin with, right? What's the weather tomorrow? Take your open AI. Why isn't open AI predicting the weather if their prediction models are so good? Why isn't Tesla predicting the, the weather if their prediction models are so good? So like, the weather is the case study for why prediction science has limited predictive ability, right? Like you can, sure you can make some predictions like, okay, we see that uh, this cloud is dropping rain and it's traveling at this speed, so tomorrow we can assume it's going to be over here and then dropping rain. And of course you can make big predictions like that, but to actually, like I still can't get an hour by hour, minute by minute, accurate prediction for where I am. And it's like, this is easily demonstrated with uh, just some simple examples. So let's say I collect, I collect a bunch of data and I Then I create my predictive model for where I think the data is going to land. And then I get a new piece of data, right? Like we know this from math class. It doesn't always, you can't ever, no matter what the data you have, no matter what line, algorithm used to draw the line for prediction. Maybe it's a straight line. Maybe it's a, a weird wacky curvy line. In AI, they use a lot, they use a tend to use a blurry line, um, but no matter no matter what, it, you you still can't predict things. And so, further example of why this doesn't work um, is okay. Well, look at an example of nature for a prediction machine. Does such a thing exist? And as far as I can tell, there is there isn't such thing as a prediction machine in nature. Um, all intelligence and all life it reacts to its environment. It doesn't predict its environment. Uh, even us ourselves, we're, we we can predict things, but we're still reaction machines at the end of the day. It can take. Um, a few seconds, like, like maybe it takes a little bit for me to come up with a response, but that's just a delayed reaction time, right? Um, and so, like, if you look at the trees, well, the trees look like they're intelligent because they seem to be able to know where the sun is, and they point their leaves towards the sun. But they aren't predicting where the sun is going to be and then pointing their leaves there. They're reacting to the sun touching the leaves and that causes them to turn towards the sun. It's a reaction. And every piece of life on Earth, I think you can model as a reaction machine way easier than you can a prediction machine. Um, and so taking this approach where everything has to be a prediction and if we are able to make a really good prediction machine therefore we've conquered AI is is bullshit right like predict the weather 
if that's so true, why can't we just predict the weather? If your models are so good, and like you see this, like they, the, all AI stuff, it doesn't work, right? Like it sort of kind of works in some situations, and then in other situations, it just doesn't work. And like, so why why are we still using going down this path of prediction that we can make a, an amazing prediction machine? It doesn't make any sense to me. We're reaction machines. And so, so how would we build a reaction machine then? Well, well how did nature build us? <laughs> I know how to react in any situation, either two different ways, either because I learned from previously in a similar situation how to react, or my ancestors were in a similar situation, and they learned to react that way. And that's how I know how to react in any situation. Right, we're reaction machines. So, you can't just like... It doesn't make sense that you can just like take a bunch of data and then say, okay, we'll just find predictions and now we can create intelligence. You have to figure out how to how you react given a piece of information. And the only way that we do that today is through software. You give a software a piece of information and then it's able to react to it and transform it into something else. And so this is why with my approach with AI, I think we need to be, instead of focusing on just like <sighs> The approach doesn't really make any sense to me, but just taking like a bunch, just taking all the data on the internet and then just throwing it into an algorithm that you just make up that's not really based on anything. You just sort of, oh, I think it should work like this because of this, and I think it should work like this because of this, and then you just sort of hope that it creates intelligence. And I think what's going on here is. A few different things that are kind of confusing. So we have neurology research, which studies brains as they grow in petri dishes, and then we have um, some cool computer science stuff. like the game of life and all of these things are getting conflated in a really weird way You're like okay well this is and this is how many AI and you throw in uh, Turing's uh, stuff on AI as well and it's all getting pushed into this like confusing confusing mess so with um Right, so why is everyone confused? Why is everyone thinking it needs, needs to be a prediction machine? So, Conway's Game of Life is this really cool concept where you start with a, um, uh, you have a game board with a very simple set of rules, and you place pieces on the, on the board, and then given those rules, you either add or remove pieces, and given a simple set of rules, you're able to given the right configuration, it can appear to make something that looks quite intelligent and has a lot of uh, interesting stuff going on in it. And so we have that concept. Then we have the current state of the art in neurology research. Now, the problem with researching the brain is that you can't. Because, like, I need my brain, <laughs> like, so you can't, like, be out in there poking around. Or it, it makes it a hard thing to study. So a lot of the research that's currently being done right now on brains is on how to grow neurons in Petri dishes. And so we have a lot of stuff coming out of neurology research saying things like, um, well, the way that neurons develop in the brain is that... Uh, they just sort of randomly assemble into 
into a machine that's able to uh, recognize patterns. And this is true for neurons in a Petri dish, but that's not how neurons form in the brain. There's not just neurons. There's other structures in there that hold the neurons together, hold them in place, and create a different structures that allow us to have intelligence. And so we've taken this idea that neurons randomly self-assemble, and then you take this Conway's game of life, and so, okay, so if we have just a simple thing, a digital neuron, that's our game board, it's just a very simple thing, we can just throw, we just have to come up with the, the right configuration, the starting configuration for the game of life, and then it will create intelligence. And we don't have to do any work. Um, it'll just magically be intelligent. And like, you see, like, it's kind of ridiculous, the, the development life cycle of these systems, because basically, this is what they do, they're like, okay, so we need to have some self-assembling neuron system that comes up and is somehow intelligent. Okay, so we can, uh, we have this many servers, and so we can afford to have a system with this many neurons. Okay, so we put these neurons in, and we'll just take all the data from the internet, and we'll just pump it through and see what happens. And so they take it, they pump it all through, and then they have prompt engineers. And the prompt engineers come in, and they go and uh, test it and see, okay, well, did, did we create artificial general intelligence? And so this is why it's being done so secretively, because they don't know what they're doing. They're just like, okay, well, if we just, like, randomly put these, like, set of neurons and have it self-assemble into an intelligence, well, then we have to test it and make sure it's actually intelligent. And so then they go through and say, okay, well, can you do this? Can you do this? Of course, it can't do anything, but it can do some stuff, which is interesting. Okay, but now you have to justify the expense of all these servers that you had to build something that doesn't work. And so, okay, well, it does do these things, I guess. You can technically you can have a very directed conversation about tell me a joke, and it will tell you a joke. Or you can do these very, uh, go down the primrose path, and as long as you're on the path, it'll uh, look like it's doing something. And so we can use this to trick people into giving up money to do it again. Right? So, and, and so they think, well, the problem isn't the, the methodology that isn't really based on science is based on some confusing conflictions of different things and oh, we can get intelligence from it so right and then they so then you come back and because it doesn't really work but it does sort of kind of work so you can sell that to people and use that to give you more money to build. Oh, we just didn't build enough servers. That's the problem. We just need to build more servers, and we just need to get more data. <laughs> and and then that's GPT 2.0, right? And then that doesn't work. You can sort of do kind of some things. Oh, we just need more neurons. But it's, but like when you look at, like we already have the solution for intelligence. It's the human brain. We already know how it's made. It's pre-programmed through evolution, plus it learns some stuff about the environment. So let's just copy that. So the pre-programmedness, we need code, right? So we have to, we need to get all of the code possible and assemble it in an intelligent way. And so if you go through all my other uh, videos on this topic, we'll see how I go into detail on how to actually do this problem. You know, mess around and just keep creating shit that doesn't fucking work. <laughs> Check them out.